All right, so here we go. We have a imam for squat snatches. Um, go ahead and work on your range of motion. Your arm swings, your neck rolls, your rolls with your arms, and your good mornings, and your bootstrappers. Okay, go ahead and do that on your own. Do eight of each. This is range of motion. I'm gonna jump into uh, the skill because there's a movement pattern that I need to teach you. Make sure that you got down, okay? So um, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, squat snatches, okay? I know most of you are working with one object at home. That's fine. And again, um, feel free to work with a, a fairly lighter object than usual, okay? This is going to test your mobility um, with power. And we might not be ready for, for a lot of weight on this one, so be kind to yourself. We have an imam. So every minute on the minute, we're going to do four squat snatches on each arm, which means four and four. That's a total of eight reps, okay? So just to clarify that. We're gonna do this for 12 minutes. So if you have a barbell at home and you're doing it with a barbell, you're only going to do four total. So not four and four, just four in total. I'm gonna go ahead and use my very light spray because I don't feel quite ready to pull the dumbbell just yet. I'll show you in a little bit what it would look like, but again, be kind to yourself in this transition. So squat snatch. I'm gonna show you what that looks like real time, okay? So squat snatch, reaching down, I'm gonna go between my legs, but you could also go on the side. I prefer between the leg if I'm using a single object. So I'm going to go ahead, touch the floor, extend into a high pole, okay? Punch over, let in a squat. This is the squat. Snatch. Hop, let it That's one. That's two. Okay, I'm gonna try and show you the dumbbell. This is a five pound dumbbell, okay? And it's fairly light, but again, the squat snatch is going to be testing you guys in ways you have probably never been tested before when it comes to your Boom, let Okay? down, extension, and down. So if you notice on this side, my arm's somewhat bending. I don't have the ability to hold up those five pounds because I haven't been working on my thoracic strength and just static hold through power. So again, be kind to yourself. You could even do body weight and aim to land with that arm straight up over your head versus it going behind you or being bent or you having to turn over, okay? Um, if you guys are struggling with this movement a lot, I suggest to not even worry about the squat snatch in itself, but focus on an overhead squat, single arm. Right arm goes up in the air, left arm goes straight up, and your goal is going to be to try, here I'll show you, if you even have a place to set your um, goal to. Alright, so here I am, as straight as I can, tap it up. Enough. And then slowly, as you start getting comfortable, getting a little lower. Some of you might experience having to tilt forward, okay? Tight hips. Are you, are you moving yourself back? It looks like this. Or two, you're trying to do it, but your knee starts collapsing. You're like, and you're twisting. There's a lot to be worked with. So make sure that you take time there. Stretching the floor, foam rolling the floor, so that it's better for your form. If you're noticing any of these patterns, I highly suggest that you work with body weight, arm in the air, find a surface before you consider picking up any weight for it. Okay, so we're doing four squat snatches on each side, scale down to just doing overhead work. That's also super efficient. All right, next up for your workout, you have four time, which means we're giving you a set amount of reps and movements. Um, and then your goal is to try and finish it as fast as you can. And the movements we have for you today are handstand push-ups and broad jumps. Those are the two movements. You're doing 25-25, so 25 handstand push-ups and then 25 um, broad jumps, and then 25 handstand push-ups and 25 broad jumps, and that would be it. That's your workout. For your handstand push-ups, I am facing the camera in a manner that you might be able to see the back wall, but I'm gonna be so far away, okay? Um, so I want you guys to focus also, because we haven't been at the gym for so long, on doing it off a box or off a surface. You can use a mat, but piking is a good way to do it, okay? And I want you guys to pike enough that you're um, parallel to the 
that box versus here. This is an elevated push-up, okay? So be careful with your setup. Make sure that you guys are cranking as much as you can and you're going through those push-ups. Boom, and your head does not have to touch the floor. Just go as low as you can. You can even put a pillow right between your hands, okay? And that's going to be your handstand push-up if you don't have the traditional handstand push-up on the wall. Um, and then your broad jump. So for your broad jump, you're going to need five, eight, four, five. Don't worry about it. You don't have a lot of space. Use what you have. I want you guys to focus on a two-foot takeoff, two-foot landing, and we're moving forward. So a broad jump, unlike a vertical jump, like a knee tuck, would be a vertical jump, right? Or a point or a goal is to get height. On a broad jump, we want to cover distance. So that's the difference. So again, if you don't count with a lot of space in your house or wherever you're working out, focus just on takeoff landing technique, okay? So using your arms. Arms is gonna help you achieve distance. So if I'm gonna start here, two feet flat on the floor, landing, okay? So it's not that big of a jump, but I'm still focusing on my landing and my takeoff that impact on your feet, making sure that you're landing safely like you would in a box jump, right, flat-footed, versus landing on the toe or landing on the heel entirely. So here, just with the two I did, I was able to cover three squares. In your house, if you're working with a mat, maybe try jumping from one end of that yoga mat to the other, okay? Now make sure it's safe, it's not slippery, um, but again, it doesn't have to be a crazy distance. Set yourself a good goal to achieve for those 25 reps, okay? Nothing crazy. Challenge yourself, yes, but don't kill yourself. All right, so 25 handstand push-ups, 25 broad jumps, and every minute, so let's say this workout takes you 10 minutes, right, to complete. Every minute of that workout, you have to stop and do uh, sumo deadlift high pulls, okay? Um, you're gonna do seven of them every minute. So as I'm doing my handstand push-ups and doing my broad jumps, every time I see one minute pass by, every 60 seconds, you're going to do your high pull, seven. So you're gonna be interrupted every minute to complete your seven sumo deadlift high pulls. And you will be starting your workout with these seven sumo deadlift high pulls, okay? And that's the workout. Have fun.